Thank you very much for keeping it why in the morning. My name is Ram Maguko. You're just in time for the next conversation of the day. Now, today is all about discussing national values. Uh, as we talk about national values, we want to find out why is it uh, that uh, we talk about this? Are they enshrined in the Constitution? What are, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the articles that uh, are particularly mentioning national values in the Constitution? We shall talk about why we have the national values in the, in the constitution and uh, where particularly they are do we have within the constitution any solutions to kenya's current problems in regards to national values well joining me i'm with edward nyongesa wafula he is the acting director at the national of, uh, 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 directorate of national cohesion and values from the ministry of interior and coordination of national government Karibisana. Sante. Yeah, um, with Edo uh, Nyongeza, uh, ensure that you uh, participate with us. Thank you for finding time, Bwana uh, Nyongeza. Uh, it's, a, it's a pleasure. Uh, hope your morning is well. Quite well. Kusalama. Kabisa. Asante sana. Engage with us. The hashtag is why in the morning at uh, Ram Aguko at Y254 channel is where you can find us. Remember, we are live on our website at www.kbc.co.ke e forward slash y254 ensure that you follow us online and on our facebook platform as we continue with this conversation give us your thoughts in regards to national values Boranyo Geza here is uh, going to uh, uh, answer all the issues pertaining to this particular topic on national values let's uh, get it going Boranyo Geza um We've had this conversation with, uh, uh, you, know, you know, previously, and uh, I was looking into addressing the question why we have national values in the constitution, and uh, let's pick it up from there. W uh, national values and the constitution. What exactly is its importance in the constitution that it had to be enshrined there on, on different articles that we shall mention in a bit? Thank you, Bonaram. Let me begin by saying I come from the Directorate of National Cohesion Values, which yes. I said. Yes. Uh, some may not know that we are domiciled in the Ministry of Interior, and we are responsible for the government agenda on uh, national values and principles of governance mainstreaming. Mm -hmm. uh, coming back to the question of national values, uh, before I get to why the Constitution, I think broadly the world is becoming a global village, we say. Yeah. Uh, we are all connected and related very easily in a short way. And therefore, in a village, we have homes. And uh, naturally, you'll find certain homes, uh, people who want to go to certain places and not others, because of what is in this home, who is in that home. Mm -hmm. And therefore, in this globe, world global village, we are looking at Kenya as a home among many other homes. And therefore, we want to position this home as the home to go to when you want, when you want fellowship, when you want to sell, when you want to buy. Yeah, yeah, the and home to be. Yes, the home to be yeah. in that village. Uh -huh. And so the drafters of the constitution had this in mind that uh, Kenya is part of the world community of nations. Yeah. And how are we perceived, how are we relating on this? And so we look inwardly and look at ourselves uh -huh. and would want uh, to turn out in a manner that will be very competitive for the world market. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And therefore, in the drafting of the constitution, uh, looking at positioning ourselves as a country where investors would want to go to, where uh, people who are looking for excellence would want to go to, people you want, people who you can trust, you want to recruit from, uh, values were seen as a critical element of our being a society. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And there are four things that informed the inclusion of our values in the constitution. Uh -huh. One was uh, to create a national identity for the people and the population of Kenya. A national identity and to exercise our sovereignty in a manner that feeds the, the picture that we want to be. Uh -huh. So we are saying uh, as a people, how do people outside Kenya perceive us. What is our identity? And identity is not just the name. It goes further than a name to look at the character of the persons. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. the attributes, the way they relate to one another, mm -hmm. uh, the confidence. So how, we, how, how they even treat yes. each other, how they relate. So, so the, the values are intended to create a people mm -hmm. that fit the description that is provided in the values. So these this national values enshrined in the constitution, we are, we are looking into offering solutions to current problems. Yes, in as far as, number one, our outlook is. And you know, your outlook is a product of what is inside of you. What you believe in, especially is what you will say and what you'll end up doing. Uh -huh. That is number one. Uh -huh. Number two, uh, the values are in the constitution to help us and help Kenyans and every person resident in Kenya to realize the Bill of Rights, which are the basic uh, legal and the civil rights of every citizen in terms of how they relate to one another and relate to the state. And we'll be talking about some of this. Yeah, yeah, uh, quite yeah. a lot of those uh, values touch on the exercise and enjoyment of the Bill of Rights for the citizens. Mm -hmm. Number three, why we have national values in the constitution is in order for us to have good governance. And in governance here, we are looking at um, how do we manage the resources that we have vis-a-vis mm. -vis our national aspirations and our national goals of development. Uh, where is, how are we benefiting the citizens in this mm -hmm, country? Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. the values will guide us in exercising uh, good governance. And lastly, number four, in order for us to have sustainable development. Mm. And the uh, government exists, and even citizens will be looking at uh, attaining certain expectations in terms of growth, economically, socially, politically. And then as we enjoy this development in the current time and dispensation, we must not compromise the generations that come hereafter. Yeah. And we can only attain this when we have values that guide us, that we are not eating at the expense of the generations that come later. Mm -hmm. So basically mm -hmm. those four informed why they was need to put those values, values in the constitution. In the constitution. Yes. Now, um, looking at this particular constitution, the Kenyan constitution, Yes. now, specifically, are there uh, any constitutional provisions of these national values? Because now, uh, as, as, as they exist, the various articles of the constitution that uh, speak on uh, national values, uh, you know, what are they? Uh, what do they include? just to mention but a few we national values are mentioned many times uh -huh. in many places in the constitution uh -huh. if we begin from the preamble yeah which is the uh, the opener uh -huh. in the constitution i mean in the preamble the drafters talking about we the people of kenya giving our unto ourselves this constitution uh -huh. Uh -huh. then it states down there that recognizing the aspirations mm -hmm. of the people of Kenya. Mm. It, it, we are looking at, it says uh, the preamble in which Kenyans recognize the aspirations for a government based on the essential values of human rights, equality, freedom, democracy, social justice, and the rule of law. Yes. Oh, wow, that's detailed. That is the aspirations. Uh -huh. You know, it's talking about the, what do the people of Kenya aspire. This is the dream of the Kenyan citizen. And you've really mentioned that word aspirations. Yes. Yeah. Aspirations are talking about the, the dreams, the vision that Kenyans have. What kind of society do we want to have? That must be driven or built with national values at the core. And do you think we, are re we, we have uh, you know, uh, 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 really worked on that when it talks about uh, human rights, equality, freedom, democracy, uh, social justice, and the rule of law? It's a journey, Ram. The realization of that aspiration yeah. is a journey. I'm happy we are already on this. And, uh, and the, 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 the journey, if it hasn't started, we have started it. <laughs> we have started. The Chinese say the, the journey of a thousand miles begins with one step. Yeah. We have done more than a step in this case for us as Kenyans. Mm -hmm. uh, first of all, having made that declaration, having documented it in our constitution, further than that, having set up infrastructure, and I'm talking about uh, the, the institutions responsible 
setting up uh, institutions responsible like ourselves we have commissions and like we'll be talking about that again in the, yeah, con in yeah. the constitution mm -hmm. and we have already begun this conversation when you come through the, the, the government uh, operations we will be talking about this later on yeah. every year there is a report on the progress that has been realized which the president gives to the nation so and here we're talking we about outline a number of things that we have done so we are on this journey. We may not have uh, attained what we want in terms of basic rights, in terms of uh, enjoyment of those privileges for every citizen. But uh, we are on this journey mm -hmm. and we will not quit until we get to where we ought to be as per the expression, uh, inspirations that Kenyans have in the constitution. So, so, so we are talking about constitutional provisions on national values. Yes. And you said it starts all the way from the preamble. From the preamble. Heading over to the different articles. Now, when it comes to Article 4, 2, which is now the, in the chapter on the Republic of Kenya, mm -hmm. uh, a declaration of the Republic of Kenya, it says that Kenya shall be a multi-party democracy founded mm -hmm. on the values. No, it, it says the Republic of Kenya shall be a multi-party democratic state founded on the, yeah, on the national values yes. and principles of governance referred to in Article 10. Yes, that is a declaration again for the Republic of Kenya. That is how we will be founded on the national values and principles of governance, which we will be uh, outlining in Article 10. Mm -hmm. So that this is how we will be and this is what will guide. And a lot of, uh, you talked about how far we have gone. If you have listened to court rulings in the mm -hmm. recent uh, past, even yeah. the judiciary, uh, any violation of these uh, provisions have attracted uh, punishment. We have seen people punished. Even among uh, the rulings, you'll see they are cited. You violated uh, this section of the constitution, constitution yeah. on national values. So they are beginning because, like we said in the first discussion, that national values are the principle, the main beliefs of our people that guide how we relate, how we do our business and among the business we are doing is governing ourselves so that is how it is that this value is guide and that's why the declaration of the republic shall be multi-party democracy one founded on national values and principles of governance that are outlined in the constitution and based on this we we can even conclude or depict one particular uh, idea yes that these national values started being promoted back that when Kenya was uh, getting its independence. We are looking at when Kenya became a multi-party state uh, because we are, talking, we are saying the Kenya shall be a multi-party democratic state. So it means it didn't just start now. We started promoting these national values when we, when we started promoting the multi-party democracy. Mm, yes and no. Is, 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 the, is, is that true to yes analyze it? Yes and no. That? Yeah. Yes, in terms of multi-partisan because uh -huh. at independence we had uh, a multi-party uh, democratic arrangement yes, yes later on it became a de facto one party mm -hmm. until 1992 when multi-party is reintroduced but in terms of national values mm -hmm. uh, the national values are not new in themselves exactly they have okay. existed as cultural values they have existed as religious values. Mm -hmm. They have existed as uh, community values. Some of these have, like the Bill of Rights, a lot of it are universal rights uh -huh. exercised uh -huh. and observed internationally. But having them documented and outlined as national values for us as Kenyans, uh -huh. that begins with the Constitution of Kenya 2010. <laughs> Interesting. So Interesting. this is an amalgamation and uh -huh. a realization that and you know, going back a little bit in our history, given our experience in early 2008, following the disputed uh, presidential result, mm. uh, that is when it came as a wake-up call for us in Kenya that we take our nationhood for granted. Uh -huh. A small trigger like that disagreement it caused a flare-up of our expressions and people were up in arms against each other for no reason. That pointed to an underlying problem that we have been brooding over for since independence. Our nationhood, the fabric that holds us, it was missing. 
So that is why now in the constitution 2010, coming after the experience that I just mentioned, mm -hmm. the draft has found it necessary for us to look internally. You know, we have done so much in terms of our hardware. We put up good infrastructure. We do mega development projects. Yeah. But yeah. we have forgotten to work on our networks, mm -hmm. our mm -hmm. diversity, celebrating and uh, harnessing the strength that is in our diversity as a Kenyan. So that's why now the proposal that we now have national values and we clearly define who we are, like I said earlier, mm -hmm. uh, to shape the identity of the Kenyan person, which is not superficial, like stated, like done, but felt in the heart because its values must be believed. You know, we cannot enforce values like you would the, the, the regulations which says do, do not, do, do not. Mm -hmm. Values are a matter of believing. You instill, instill into someone Yes, in fact, value. instilling is the word. And instilling is a conviction that indeed this is right, this is okay. So it will not be overnight, but as we continue talking about this, as we continue uh, rewarding and uh, putting boundaries for ourselves and mm -hmm. holding ourselves to account, we will end up now then gravitating towards, but unless we state it like it's stated in the Constitution of Kenya 2010, that these are the national values, then we know, ah, this is what we are. And we begin telling ourselves and telling our children through the, the curriculum, through other avenues that we have for each sector, then we begin to define and know who we are. And we hope that over time we are beginning to gravitate and to change and become the people we have declared ourselves to, to be, be yeah, in that yeah. article 4. And remember, uh, to, to, to those watching, remember we were talking about constitutional uh, provisions on national values. And from home, do you, based on your perception, are there constitutional provisions on national values? Do they exist? Are you aware of any or are you aware of none? You can ask those questions. Dr. Buananyonges, uh, <laughs> we had a conversation before we went on air. That yes, thing yes, is still yes. in my head. Sal, sal, it's okay. Yeah. yeah. So, um, we, you know, the, the hashtag is why in the morning at Ramaguku and at Y254 channel. Ensure that you engage with us in regards to this co particular conversation. I shall mention just uh, a few articles and then you can be able to talk about them. Yes. Let's go to article 132. One. Yes. But see of the constitution and i remember you mentioned it here yes uh, you, uh, w when we started and it's uh, you know we, uh, in this article 132 which provides that the president shall each uh, that uh, shall, shall once report. every year mm. report in an address to the nation on all the measures taken and the progress achieved in the realization of uh, national values referred to in article 10 the president is further required to publish in the Nash, in, in the uh, Kenya Gazette the details of the report. Let's dispense of that particular issue first. Yeah, and uh, that is important. Yeah. Like I said, we did not have these values before 2010. Mm. And uh, like was defined previously, when we talk about national values, they are the beliefs of our people. They are part of a culture mm -hmm. that we ought to be. But in 2010, we were not. And up to now, largely, mm. we are not exactly those values that we have said. We have agreed that we are on that journey. We are, we are on a journey, yeah, yeah. So the drafters, realizing the gap that we ought to have been from 1963, yes, yes. which we are not, mm. then we must do something to get to where we are. Because we are, we are having yes, challenges. Yes, we, we must work overdrive. Uh -huh. And nothing less than committing the head of state, the president, with the responsibility of driving the agenda on realizing these national values. Mm -hmm. That is why in Article uh, 131, 132 mm. that you read, mm. that 132 commits the president that every year, so that we take stock, so that we don't lose out, yeah. the president is expected constitutionally to state, to report in an address to the nation, the measures that have been put in place to realize mm -hmm. these national values, and what progress have been realized. So, so every year, uh, we are not forgetting it. We are not glossing over this matter. We have to keep reminding we ourselves. Must, and therefore, because the president must report, then he must cause action as the head of government. So, so, so if, if, if the president reports to um, 
uh, gives gives a report uh, in uh, an, an address to the nation. Yes. Um, how is it done? Um, what is the role of the different in institutions in uh, building up towards that report now? And uh, luckily, our directorate is the agency responsible for collecting. And uh, I would say here, the approach we have taken is to mainstream promotion of national values within government through the performance contracting platform. Okay. okay. Every year, uh. as the, each government agency commits to attain certain milestones in their area of deployment by their mandate, uh. we have succeeded to get all of them commit on certain targets of national values because they are mainstreamed. Okay. okay. So every agency of government, of uh. public, uh -huh. we do agree on what will be the target in this year. And we cascade that to all government agencies. And they commit to implement those measures within their uh, areas of operation. It begins at the beginning of every financial every year. Every financial year. So at the end of the year, uh. while they are reporting, if you are responsible for the agricultural sector crop production, uh. in the crop production sector, national values can be mainstreamed. And do, do this is, is when you are talking to farmers about uh, best practices uh. in uh, banana production, that opportunity can be mainstreamed, uh, where we can bring in national values of good governance, of social justice. Uh -huh. uh, they can see how this growing of these bananas is helping us uh, attain a certain value within that setup, and we document these uh -huh. measures. Each sector documents what they have done. And the sector has always... Th 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 then they, at they the end of the year, they give us a report. Uh, in this sector, this uh. is what we did. And this is how far we have gone. In terms of awareness creation, this uh -huh. is what we have done. And this is the number that we have reached out. So we collect all this data uh -huh. and enable the president once every year to be able to say my government has put in place the following measures and uh -huh. they're documented and there is evidence to that effect. Uh -huh. So that is what is done. Every year we do have measures being implemented and that is documented. The president reports when you have seen the state of the nation address. Yes. Every time the president reports, that is part of what he does. The state of the nation address is about national values. Uh -huh. He says my government put in place the following measures. And this is what has been realized. And it's quantified. Either the, 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 the quantity of what has been done mm -hmm. in contributing towards the realization of those national values. So, so th this is something that... Uh, and it's gazetted. You can see it in the Kenya Gazette. Any person can access to evaluate and see indeed uh, what it is that was done. So this, this is something that you just can't cook. You cannot cook. <laughs> you cannot cook. If you come to us again, uh. we have our evidence. Because we do not just take... Uh, reports from institutions to say this is what we have done and we believe you uh, you have to give us a backup a proof. a proof that indeed you did this then we would collaborate that and that's what uh, we document the president talks about facts powerful keeping the nation accountable indeed according to the constitution and it is uh, published in the Kenya gazette yes these particular details yes um, when should we be looking forward to the next report coming up the the, the last report because of covid it yeah. would have been earlier the last report was given in november when the president addressed the joint sitting of the house mm -hmm. uh, we do hope that uh, the next one should be coming out any time now we are just waiting for confirmation of the date uh, but that should be any time around this time Oh, wow. Yeah. So uh, the president keeps us in check. Even though Kenyans say, uh, President, your government should do this, should do that. He gives a report of what the government yes. has done. Yes. Every year, there are certain Every measures year. that are put in place. Interesting. Yes. And, 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 the, and, the, and the question is from home, did you know that that is in the constitution? Yeah. <laughs> that the president must give a report yes. uh, according to Article 132.1 yes. of the constitution. Let's talk about Article 174. Yes which provides for objects and uh, principles of uh, devolved governments. Now, the, we are, our system of government is a devolved yeah. government. And it's not enough to commit the president. Uh -huh. Because 
directly is responsible for, while he's the head of the national government, he has oversight over devolved units. The devolved units need also to link into what the national agenda is. So that's why in the objects of the devolved government, uh -huh. the intention is to promote national values. And here we are talking about democratic principles and we are talking about accountable uh, exercise of power, uh -huh. which is one of the values. Accountable exercise of power. Why did we have devolution? In the object they say, this was created in order to promote the values of the democratic process. Yes. And therefore that the people who are exercising power at the devolved unit do so accountable to the people. So here we are looking at and the number two, uh. they are also to, it's also to promote national unity. Okay. And we okay. will be seeing this again when we come to talk about uh, among the challenges that have affected our nationhood and the national unity have been feelings of marginalization and uh, regional imbalance. So the spirit behind devolution is to equitably spread out uh, resources and therefore jumpstart development everywhere across the country. Uh -huh. And this is what will foster national unity in the sense that we all feel included. We all feel we have received the fair share of what is due to us as citizens of this country. Wow, and therefore, wow. that way, devolution will contribute to two things. Uh, accountable exercise of devolved or democratic power and uh, inspire national unity uh, from all across the country. So, if, uh, so we are looking at uh, the county governments. Yes. Right. Uh, so you have to like, have meetings with the county governments uh, have reports from their end and uh, ensure that uh, they are uh, accountable at, you know, Pali Machina is, yes. is, is that the case? Mm, not really. Uh. It's not like, uh, you know, the, the constitution, the spirit of the constitution is that the national and county governments shall work collaboratively. Exactly. They are independent in their own way. Uh -huh. But in as far as we will not ask them or demand that they do this. We just following up. Uh, the, the better word would be for us, like the national government working with the county governments uh -huh. to enhance their capacity, especially in terms of uh, tracking realization of national values. Uh -huh. And uh, for this case, at the county level, the county public service board, according to the county government act, have that responsibility of driving the national values agenda. So our point of entry will be specifically the county public service boards mm -hmm. uh, who are in charge of the human resource at the county level. And therefore, uh, working with them to infuse uh, national values uh, at county level, mm -hmm. just in tandem with what is happening at the national level. We do <laughs> hope, uh, so far we have not, not all of them have uh, impressed giving us these reports, but we are happy that a number of county governments have uh, already started. Uh, so far, I think we have about 10 who have ten, ten, ten counties. Who, are, uh, who are on board. Mm. And we are working to increase this base, yeah. that we get more county governments uh, participating in this, because we are only having national values entrenched when all sectors of this government, of this nation, including county governments, mm. are on board mm -hmm. and are contributing, because a lot of resources are being expended at county levels. But, 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 but you can say it's being embraced yes, it at is. the county level. It is. Uh -huh. uh, okay, let's look at uh, another article. Article 234, 2H, which requires the Public Service Commission to evaluate and report to the President and Parliament on the extent of which the values and principles referred to in Article 10 and 22 uh, and 232 are com uh, complied with in the public service. Okay. In this uh, 234 yeah. uh, should be seen together with 232. Uh -huh. And 232 is about uh, uh, values and principles of public service. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Article 10 is about national values and principles of governance that cut across. Yeah. Article 232 is values and principles of the public service. 
and in 234, we are talking about the mandate of the Public Service Commission, mm. uh, the human resource engine of the Republic of Kenya. They are responsible for mainstreaming the public's values and principles of the public service. In 234 that you've just read, we are looking at them uh, evaluating the extent to which uh, public officers are complying with those values and principles of the public service mm -hmm. and the national values in Article 10. Those, uh, 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 those who hold these uh, offices. Yes. So they do every year do an evaluation. That means they will visit every office mm -hmm. and uh, with the national values and the public service, values and principles of the public service in mind, demand to know to what extent have you complied with this. Values and principles of the public service will be talking about prudent use of resources, mm -hmm. accountability. Mm -hmm. uh, they are specific to the, the public service. The values of Article 10, like we will be seeing later, we'll be talking about our Kenyanness. We're talking about patriotism. They are broad. We're talking uh -huh. about patriotism, we're talking about national unity. And we're saying all this must be complied with in the public service because the public service must take lead. Because these uh, institutions are funded by the state. So the Kenyan public will want to see this example being set in terms of how the public service conduct themselves because public members of the public will come to these institutions to get service. Mm -hmm. They must demand accountability. From them. They must demand to see the yeah. values uh, exhibited by these institutions. And that is why it is the responsibility of the Public Service Commission uh, to evaluate and would want to see this progressively uh, getting better, that the public sector is complying with uh, those values and principles as outlined in the Constitution. So is it that, because you are, we are talking about now public, public service, huh? yes. and uh, these are offices. Yes. In relation to how they relate to the one inch who comes there, Yes. that is uh, exactly what it is. Huh? Yes. All right. That all right. Uh, when they are coming or when public agencies are exercising their mandate, mm. are they adhering to the values and principles? Because if you want to change society, and we're talking about transforming ourselves into value society, that transformation will come when consistency, what is written in the constitution, is what is practically seen. That when you go to the office, you can see those constitutional values. And, 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 and um, this goes hand in hand with how you treat that person who has, yes, come, to who has come to your office. How do you relate with them? How, what language yes, do you what use? What language do you use? Uh, communication. Uh -huh. do, you, do you communicate? Do the public know what is happening here? Are they satisfied with your services? Are they? Yes. <laughs> Those are the kind of things that you want to look at. Uh -huh. And do you care that they are not satisfied? Maybe if you get feedback, do you ever listen? And what do you do when you get that feedback? So we do, we want to see uh, continuous improvement in terms of mm -hmm. uh, reformation that this is what we did and they did not act well with the public. And because of that, we have now uh, altered in this manner to accord with what the public expects of us. And sometimes are you even in office when they need to see you? That is the kind of question we want to see. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting indeed. Yeah. Let's go to another article. Wow, there are so many. Uh, article 249.1b, which provides the objects of the commissions yes. and the independent offices to secure the observance of democratic values and principles by all state organs. That is established on the, in the Constitution of Kenya 2010. Uh. We have uh, Chapter 15 about commissions and independent offices. Uh. Uh, they were established. So, in this case, the values, the, the, there is an aspect of governance and accountability, uh -huh. which the commissions are supposed to, to drive. You look okay. at the, the independent offices, we were looking at centralizing everything would be a problem. So, the commissions help counter. Why are they established? To enhance service delivery. Exactly. Look at the I'll give you an example, CAJ, Commission for Administrative Justice. That agency is established 
purely as the ombudsman. Yeah. To listen to feedback from members of the public and the experience they get from the public institutions responsible for discharging services. Whenever there is dissatisfaction, what do they do? The members of the public have a redress mechanism. They can go to that agency and say, I went to this office and I was not uh, served like I expected according to what that institution is established to do. Mm -hmm. And then the, that commission will then take up the matter and try to establish redress so that the service required is delivered and the correction is done where the mistake was made. Wow. So we are talking wow. about promoting the values of accountability mm -hmm. uh, in the public service. Oh. Ah, I want us to move quickly. Article 10 now. Yes. We've, we've, we've made mentioning it. Article 10, Article 10. Ah, ah. Tafta constitution, my brother. Mm. <laughs> Get that constitution, read it, so that when we read, uh, as we read these, you can also uh, you know, check to see whether what we are saying is true. Why in the morning is the hashtag at Ram Maguko at Y254 channel. Keep commenting. I'm seeing so many tweets er already on our Twitter handle. We shall sample uh, uh, them as we proceed. Let's head over to Article 10. Now, I'll talk about uh, uh, two parts here. Article 10, 1, and then 10, 2, we will touch on later. Let's start with Article 10, 1, eh? yeah. which states that the national values and principles of governance bind all state organs. And this is, is, is interesting part. Yes, yes. It binds yes. all state organs, state officers, public officers, and all persons whenever any of them applies or interprets the Constitution, enacts, applies, or interprets any law, or makes or implements public policy decisions. Yes. Let's I talk think about that. That section of the Constitution sets the context. Uh -huh. The context, who do these national values apply to? And that is important because if that was not expressly stated, there was a possibility of some sector of society saying, ah, ah those ones do not affect. You see it too. Uh, that's not for <laughs> That's me. not ours. So it says clearly uh. that uh, the national values that are outlined in that article apply to all state organs. All. Then it says all public, all state officers uh -huh. and public officers. officers. Now that's where it begins. Because that's the responsibility. The order is also important. Though eventually it will say all persons. Uh -huh. But we began with state organs because that's where the highest responsibility lies. State so this, organs. Is, this is in regards to hierarchy now? Yes, because state organs we're talking about beginning from the presidency. We're talking about state officers. We're talking about, in here we are looking at cabinet secretaries. We're talking about uh, holders of constitutional offices. Those uh -huh. are the state officers, the chief justice the National Assembly, members of parliament, those are state officers. Uh -huh. They are bound by those, uh, the national values. Because then the, it comes be down to public officers. Now you are coming to uh, civil servants, uh -huh. you are talking of uh, staff or parastatals, you are talking of staff in county governments, you are talking of uh, staffs in, in, in all the other government agencies, public officers. So if at all you never knew who public officers are, yes. who state officers are, and what state organs are, today we have told you what they are. Yes. Now you know. Then it says, uh, and, and to all, all persons. persons. That means now you may not be a state officer, you may not be a public officer, you may not be an employee of any of this, but you are a person. All persons. So that they, you are bound <laughs> by this national values that we are seeing. And then it goes on to say, in what all persons, so those are the persons, uh -huh. in which area? It says whenever any of them interprets uh, or applies. Uh, applies or interprets the constitution. The constitution. Yeah, yeah. Then it goes to interprets or applies laws. Here uh -huh. we are talking about legislative uh, bills and acts that are processed, which uh, will give a mandate you know, the, the constitution is the major law. Yeah. But we have laws made by our parliaments and our county assemblies. So whenever you're, as a legislator, 
you are developing a form of legislation, mm. it must be in line with the values. With values. So, so any, any, anything that is in parliament, they must consider it must that be, it is... It must be in line with the national values. Ah. And uh, even county assemblies, whenever, whenever they are legislating, they must measure with the national values. Is it in line with the national values? There must be so national values is the uh, we can say they are the SI units of uh, yes. legislation, guiding principles. And then it says so that is in terms of leg of, 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 of legislating of developing. Uh -huh. But it also says whenever you are applying. Now, when you are applying the, 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 the constitution and applying the law, it is both sides as an enforcer or as a service uh, a service provider or a person who benefits from the service because as a citizen you can invoke the requirements of law uh -huh. to demand your right you see now uh -huh. this law says this and this is what i should get so it must be both ways when somebody is as an officer you are enforcing a law and when as a citizen of this country you are benefiting from that law uh -huh. it must be in line with the national values and principles of governance. So you can see that it's all touching. Mm -hmm. And the essence of that constitutional bit is to clarify so that we see if you just said all, in what sense? In what sense? So that provides the answer mm -hmm. to that. Because someone may say, yes, we may say all, yeah. but uh, your office is not <laughs> connected yeah. to my office. And uh, that's how Kenyans can be dodgy. Yeah. yeah, that's how Kenyans can be dodgy. Yeah. But now it, we can understand now it's clearer that even the common manangi on the ground is bound. Is bound. Yeah. All Kenyans are bound by this. Let's, now that was Article 10.1. Yes. Let's talk about 10.2, uh, which highlights the national values and principles of governance as follows. Uh, patriotism, na national unity sharing and devolution of power the rule of law democracy participation of the people human dignity equity there are so many social justice inclusive uh, inclusiveness which has been a conversation yes yes uh, equality human rights non-discrimination protection of the man marginalized good governance integrity transparency accountability and sustainable development yes and uh, Ram, uh, I think that I is, think this is a long conversation. That's going to be <laughs> a very uh, detailed discussion, yeah. perhaps going forward. Going forward, yeah. What I can say for now yeah. is in reference to what I said at the beginning. We, we were saying, why then did we need to have uh, nation, national values in the Constitution? Mm. I pointed out that four things informed this, four reasons. The first one being uh, the need uh, for us to create a national identity. Yeah. Now you'll notice that the first five set of values there mm, mm. speak to the kind of people Kenya ought to be. Yes. About identity. Yeah. Uh, the aspects of patriotism, national unity, the aspect of observance of the rule of law, the aspect of, uh, of uh, devol devolved uh, and sharing. Mm -hmm. So that attribute, which is very African, of sharing and evolution of power, yeah. they, they speak to the identity, the kind of person who a Kenyan is. Then you will see that the following set will be talking about uh, uh, exercise and enjoyment of the Bill of Rights. Yeah, yeah. So that all those things will be talking about now, who, uh, what are the basic rights of Kenyans? Uh, the state is responsible for, you know, that's what the Bill of Rights is. This is what... Uh, basic human life, the aspect of dignity, human dignity, the aspect mm -hmm. of social justice, you, you see that this need to be put in place. And it's the responsibility of all of us, like the, the Constitution said in the first part, that we are bound by this. Mm -hmm. If there's anything that one can do as an investor, for example, and we have very many uh, Kenyans who are able, who have uh, excelled in the private sector, you have set up a factory in a place and it's doing very well. So this nation of values will come in, in terms of social justice. You have made a profit in this area. Mm. How have the people who live around your place benefited, benefited from your being here? Ah. Even just by putting security lights outside or just uh, maintaining the road that comes to your facility. Mm -hmm. So that as you bring in your raw material on this good road, uh, 
the residents and people who live around there can also have the comfort of pleasure of using that facility. Mm -hmm. Or perhaps just assisting the school next to your institution uh, with textbooks or with some infrastructure or a classroom or something. So we are talking about those values again coming into play, mm. even for you as a private investor, not just saying government must do this. Yeah, and yeah. as a private citizen, you have ideas. You are mindful of your community. Instead of just sitting back and saying, to Mengoja Serikali, to Fanyi, mm. you can mobilize your neighbors and together you can uh, address <laughs> a matter <laughs> that will uh, improve the well-being of your people just yeah. with the little resources that you can get in that community without waiting, say this is the responsibility of government. the government. But as a citizen, uh -huh. you have a responsibility uh, to contribute. Is it a regardless idea? Uh -uh, no. <laughs> yeah, because this sharing, the value of sharing will drive you to say, we are benefits, beneficiaries of, we, it's our lives it's our life, that we are talking yeah. about. Yeah, yeah. What can we do to get our children to school? Why would you be happy when your neighbor's kids don't go to school? You know, and you are just there. We've, uh, uh, we've, we've really touched on a lot, yes. and uh, here we talk, we've talked about the, the, the solutions that uh, have been, uh, you know, uh, have come up due yes. to these articles in the Constitution. I, I, I want us to just wrap it up, but uh, as, we, as, we, as we do that, maybe you can tell me, now that we are where we are, yes. um, have you seen, uh, how are we in terms of the success rate of uh, implementing these particular articles, implementing the constitution, yes. and it being felt on the ground? Uh, remember you, you said earlier that uh, it's a journey. Yes. Yeah. I will uh, say it this way. Scientifically, we would be able to say this when we have conducted a, a survey. Yeah. Luckily, we did a baseline. That was the initial survey to find out in terms of uh, since 2010 when the constitution was promul promulgated. Mm. By 2015, what is the level of awareness of yes. national values and yes. compliance? Uh. And uh, in 2015, we had a, a, a figure of 38% aware level of awareness. Mm -hmm. That was the national average. It will differ from one county to another from one region to another. I may not have those statistics. Uh -huh. But uh, in terms of compliance, uh, different values, again, were complied with at different levels. You in realize different, there are in different counties, yeah. In different counties, there are 17 values. You'll find that uh, levels of patriotism will be different elsewhere. Uh, in terms of unity and cohesiveness, you'll find this, again, differ from one area to another. Yeah. We are intending, where we are now, we are planning to do another survey because that should be five years later. Uh, in this year, we ought to do another national survey to find out scientifically whether we have made progress. But uh, as we wait to do that, uh, at our level as a directorate and responsible for mainstreaming this in government, uh, we can report uh, generally now speaking that they, there is a marked improvement from where we sit. Marked okay. improvement uh, from within government Mm. Uh, going by the number of agencies, uh, government agencies that submit reports yeah. in terms of what they're doing on national, promoting national values. Uh -huh. Because we are the custodians of these reports, uh, both the quality, both the number, and the number of, and the significance of measures being implemented across the country has continued to grow. Yeah, yeah. Though we may not be able to uh, assign a percentage or a figure to it, uh -huh. Uh, we would wait to see when we have conducted that survey to be able to say scientifically that this is a growth rate from this percentage to this percentage. Wow. But wow, we wow. are very upbeat and positive that a realization of national values in Kenya is on course. Thank you very much for, for, for that. I'm looking at Eric uh, Naliana, uh, uh, watching live in the conversation. Uh, thank you to uh, uh, Demon, uh, uh, that is on Twitter. Uh, MKU, uh, Anesa Mku, uh, Sande Sana, uh, Trap Kid, uh, Sande Sana, uh, uh, Byron Gasheru, uh, thank you so much for uh, tuning in. Uh, those are pe people who are watching us online uh, on our social media platforms. So they're saying that they, they love the conversation. Uh, keep the conversation going. The hashtag is why in the morning at Ramaguk and at Y254 channel. Bona Nyongesa.
it has been a pleasure. Thank you so much for being a part of this conversation. National value is very important. It's in the article. People should read the article. Yeah, the constitution uh, uh, rather. And you, you wonder, do Kenyans read the constitution? I don't know. Uh, in, in, in your, they, they, there should be some survey that uh, uh, should indicate that. I don't know if you've, you've established that, whether Kenyans read the constitution mm. to, to even know that these articles exist. <laughs> Not yet. We, yeah. I think it's an area we should be looking at. Yeah. Yeah, because uh, Duke just read the constitution. Do you understand? Uh, we were with my colleague earlier, and uh, he mentioned that uh, members of parliament like saying the constitution is clear. Oh. And Kenyans wonder, is it clear enough? <laughs> well, today we've mentioned the particular, the, the specific articles uh, that we talk about national values. The conversation was all, all about constitutional provisions or national values. I was with Edwin Nyongesa, uh, who is uh, the acting uh, director at the national, uh, the directorate of national cohesion and values from the Ministry of Interior and Coordination of National Government. That brings us to the end of this of this conversation, this particular day. Thank you for so much for being part of this uh, uh, conversation. We value your feedback. Keep texting, keep tweeting. May God bless you and may God bless the work of your hands. Remember, keep it tuned to more of Why in the Morning. We still have a lot in store for you. This is Why254.